anybody notice how Bill Belichick and Tom Brady were inspired to rush to release press releases when Edelman retired? I've never seen Belichick gush. He didn't gush for Brady like that. He, Brady didn't gush for Belichick like that. But they both were so inspired by what Julian Edelman, Edelman is, they rushed to say what a great player he is. Listen to what Belichick said. This is remarkable. For all Julian did for our team, what I appreciated the most was he was a quintessential throwback player. He could and did everything. Catch, run, throw, block, return, cover, tackle, all with an edge and a competitiveness that would not allow him to fail. It was a privilege to coach him. Wow. Belichick's never said that about another player. Brady rushed out to congratulate him on his career. And yet I turned on the radio yesterday, the rodeo, the radio yesterday, and it was a cacophony of, he's not a Hall of Fame player. Then what is? You got to add context to stuff. Do you know Jason Garrett has a higher winning percentage than Jimmy Johnson? Who's the better coach? Wade Phillips, Bill Parcells. Essentially the same winning percentage. But Parcells took over teams that needed to be rebuilt. Wade Phillips, a good man, took over very good teams that were never quite as good as you hoped. Context. Calvin Johnson is a Hall of Famer and should be. Great player. But he retired early because he didn't play in games that mattered. And he was tired of allowing his body to get beaten up. He only has 730 total catches, half of Jerry Rice. Calvin Johnson was so frustrated with his career, he had many good years left. He goes, I'm not playing in games that matter. Edelman conversely played until his body fell apart. If you ask Calvin Johnson today, if he would trade places with Julian Edelman, damn right he would. And if you asked Edelman if he would trade places with Calvin Johnson, he would laugh in your face. Being in games that matter. I love Calvin Johnson, but he's more known for a catch that didn't count. And he retired early. Edelman, for a decade, made more big catches in more big games than any player. Super Bowl MVP. The biggest catch in Super Bowl history versus Atlanta. Second in league history in playoff catches and playoff yards. National TV. Let's add more context. Receivers on bad teams trail with eight minutes to go. And they face prevent defenses and get what I would call junk yards. Julian Edelman didn't get junk yards because the Patriots averaged 12 wins through his career. So what was Edelman doing in the last seven and a half minutes of games? Blocking. Blocking edge rushers and Mike linebackers and Sam linebackers, all bigger than him. Because the Patriots led and are part of the greatest system ever. And that's what Edelman was always about. Doing whatever it took. Edelman didn't get junkyards. His stats were in the heart, the meat of third downs in the quarters that mattered. A lot of you guys play fantasy football. I don't. But in fantasy football, sometimes receivers on bad teams are better than receivers on good teams because bad teams throw the ball late because they're trailing. Edelman doesn't trail. You have to add context that the Patriots had a system. And when you're part of a great system, you have to sacrifice things. Like Manu Ginobili would have averaged 23 a game. But in the Spurs system, he came off the bench and averaged 17 and a half in his prime. He's a Hall of Famer to me. More context. Julian Edelman was always his best in the biggest games. He was the opposite of a stat compiler. Ask yourself this. What are the best friends? The ones that love those free trips to Vegas with you? or the ones that show up when you're in the hospital getting a divorce or need to move. There's always the friends, the hangers-on, who love the free dinners, 
the parties, they take your call and then disappear when it matters. Edelman is the friend that was biggest when you needed him most. New England doesn't draft wide receivers particularly well. So he never had that superstar number one receiver that got the double coverage. He often got doubled. Nothing against Calvin Johnson. But today, if you asked him, would you take 75% of Edelman's career? He would sign up today. I don't think Edelman would take more than 5 10% of Calvin's. He didn't play any games that mattered. Any. What's his biggest catch? And I love Calvin. I met him once. Nicest guy in the world. I mean, nicest pro athlete I've ever met. But baseball's always understood context. Baseball's always understood this. Mariano Rivera only has 82 wins in his career and pitched very few innings. But 100% of writers voted him into the Hall of Fame because when he entered the game, it mattered. He was asked with the burden or responsibility of closing out the greatest franchise in history's World Series and playoff games. He may have thrown nine pitches, but they were the nine most important pitches. Baseball understands this. John Smoltz is a Hall of Famer and should be. John Smoltz played for the Atlanta Braves, pitched forever, and they were great when he played there. And yet he only won 20 games once. How? But John Smoltz in the postseason was a magician. 15-4 and four against powerhouse National League teams, and they couldn't hit him. When you look at what Belichick said yesterday, and what Brady was inspired to go to social media to say. I went for a jog yesterday after I read Belichick's press release, calling it a privilege to coach Julian Edelman. And I don't know why, but this quote popped into my head more than once. So I go on a jog, not a run. I don't run fast enough to be called a run. It's a jog. And it just kept coming back to me. Our 35th president, JFK, the late JFK, once inspired a nation, saying, ask not what the country can do for you, but what for you can do for the country. Now, Edelman's just a football player, and perhaps he only inspired Patriot Nation, Belichick and Brady. But what made him the quintessential Hall of Famer to me was, he never asked what football could do for him. He asked Brady, Belichick, Kraft, and Gronk what he could do for them. That is a winner. That is a friend. That is somebody in a foxhole. You go ahead and win your fantasy league with receivers on bad teams getting junk yards who play on Thanksgiving and always lose and finish in third and fourth place. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Give them the jackets. Give them the gold jackets. But to me, what made Jerry Rice great wasn't just all his catches. But he was unguardable in the biggest games. you got to add context to stuff. What makes a great friend, a great player, a great coach? Jason Garrett's a good coach. Jimmy Johnson's a legend. Jason's got a better win percentage. Wade Phillips is a good man and a good coach. Bill Parcells is a legend. They have essentially the same win percentage. I don't care about innings pitched. When were you asked to pitch? When did you get the ball from Joe Torre? When did Phil Jackson call your number? When were you asked to shoot? Edelman, in the biggest games for a decade, was seemingly always better in the games that mattered most. And so inspired Bill Belichick that Belichick rushed, rushed yesterday to release a statement saying it was an absolute privilege to coach him. To me, that's a Hall of Fame. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.